Hello to Darkness344 here. Today uh, I'm just going to be doing a quick uh, showcase of uh, this upcoming project that I have uh, for the 4-bit redstone computer. And I pr I think you'll enjoy it a lot because uh, it's a pretty cool project. And as you can see, I've already built this up and this will download uh, will be in the description when the project comes out, of course. But uh, what this basically is, is the worm or prom uh, memory that I made uh, a, around a month or two months ago. And it's, it's a pretty compact design, it's kind of slow because of stupid repeaters. But uh, it is very compact and as you can see, I have not modified this computer except uh, just moving this... Uh, the on off switch I just moved this a bit and I also had to move this it was like I don't know where it was but it was a bit in the way and I just moved the lines and as you can see all all we did I just built this up as well as a, a decoder and and some shift registers as well as a station which I'll get uh, I'll show you that off in a minute and as you can see it fits perfectly right on top of this computer so, uh, this project that I have in mind is actually going to be a, a several part tutorial series because there's a lot that I've got. It's pretty exciting and as you can see you may see some other uh, programs open up in my hotbar and I will show them in a minute. But as you can see, uh, it looks pretty good and uh, you can probably do this on any computer actually. As long as your redstone computer uh, has enough space for this, so if your, so as long as your ROM is on one layer, just like the standard torch ROM like this, and isn't uh, doesn't have another layer, let me just show you real quick. So let's say your ROMs, uh, uh, as long as your ROMs on one layer, so just like this kind of thing where you have your torches. Uh, uh, like this as long as your ROMs like this and doesn't isn't like a two layered one where you have another layer up here with your another layer like that uh, as long as your ROM because uh, this means you wouldn't be able to build this on top of course as long as your ROMs like that then you'll be able to build this on and you have space of course you'll probably be able to build this on your computer and basically what it is is a programmable ROM so it means you can write to it only once and as you can see, it uses the method of just uh, writing zeros to it by breaking the torches it doesn't want, which is a pretty clever design. Uh, and as you can see, it, it's not too big, actually. And the only other things it has is a decoder as well. So this is just a piston-based decoder, because, well, Bedrock Edition, you can do this. No quasi-connectivity or any of that stuff. And over here we have a very, very, very bad shift register, which unfortunately is my own design. Uh, it has a pretty cool reset though. Uh, I, I just put the repeaters in because it looked cool. Uh, I mean, it, it does help it out a bit because, yeah, it, it the, the repeaters do make sense. They're not uh, just to make a, a lovely wave pattern. <laughs> uh, but basically what this is, is a, a serial input, technically. Oh. That's a new sign. Uh, it's basically a serial input uh, as, I'm not sure what sign that is. Uh, I'm not sure if I wrote that or not. That might have been Duxon. Uh, it's a serial input uh, because, well, you just click it. And I've uh, been working on a program, uh, several programs actually, that's what the other things are, uh, to actually be able to, uh, you write some code, right? And then uh, you turn it into machine code, and then machine code, you just you just put your character in here. So I'm going to put my character like this in here. Uh, you click run on the program, and it will click uh, these fence gates with the observers. That's just because. Uh, let's just show you. Do I have a button here? Uh, a fence gate has a lot larger hitbox than a button. Uh, so, oops, that probably broke something too late now. Uh, but as you can see, a uh, fence gate just has much larger hitbox than a button, and that means it's uh, less likely to go wrong. Let's hope that, I don't think that broke anything. Uh, so yeah, you just hit the 
fence gates and, and they activate faster and basically uh, it either enters a 1 or a 0 into the shift register and um, well, I guess I can give it a demo but as you can see I can I'm not sure I think that's zeros yeah that's entering zeros into the shift register but I can enter ones as well just like that so I just entered two different ones so one one and now I'm gonna enter two zeros zero zero it's quite a slow shift register as you can see and you can also reset it like this and as you can see that's that's the reason for the repeaters so it doesn't like go you have to take the entire length to reset uh, this is a slow shift register, as, as I've already said, but just because of certain design limitations. Uh, you can use whatever shift register you want, the faster the better, of course, as long as it, well, works, uh, like one bit per tick kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool thing, and now I'm actually going to show you how you can actually use this. So I haven't got the entire program working yet, as there's still a few things that I want to add. And my dad was also helping me with the actual uh, putting stuff into the computer. So putting the machine code into this, uh, uh, let's just show it off. I think someone else has done this before. Uh, I think it was on Java Edition though. And also I've seen one where you, it actually sets blocks in places. And there's a lot of them on Java Edition, but never on Bedrock Edition. And I thought this was just an easier way to do it instead of messing with world files and stuff. So it is slower, but it's easier. So over here, we just have a very simple UI. It's going to be changed up in a bit because, I mean, free Visual Studio, am I right? And as you can see, you have uh, several different variables and certain stuff. So the window selection is basically to select this actual application, the Minecraft window. So it'll actually know to use this Minecraft window and uh, actually click in this place or jump in this place because I should have actually showed you. Uh, so this shift register on the left, uh, I mean this input on the left uh, writes a zero to the register. This input on the right writes a one to the register. And as you can see, there is a tripwire hook up there, which I don't want to reset. And that basically uh, tells uh, this uh, to basically write the contents of the shift register to a prom location. And the prom location actually uh, is uh, dictated by uh, the first, well, or the last. It Actually, yeah, it'd be the first four uh, bits of the shift register, which is a pretty clever design. So you write your address location as well as your data into this. And this data is basically uh, what you want in your instruction set. It's down here. You just have your instruction set. And so you can write machine code right into your computer and program it just with uh, those buttons over there. And uh, the way it does that is just sends a signal and activates uh, the right line of this uh, prom. Uh, yeah, let's actually show you the program. So I was already showing it. So you have the window selection, you have load program, which I'll come to that in a minute. That's really clever. Uh, it basically just reads off uh, .txt files or any text file. Uh, uh, I don't actually have a format here. I guess I'll make one. I'll show you how to make them. You have a bot which basically just stops it because if it's clicking and you kind of just it's taking a long time and you want to stop it, you can just click that. I'm not sure if it's working yet or not. I'll have to check out that. So yeah, my dad has made this for me, which is pretty cool. You have click position, which uh, I'm not actually sure what this is. I'm pretty sure it's just the... Uh, oh yeah, yeah. It's basically dictating because if you are making this on another computer, you might have a different shift register design. And instead of this being a zero and this being a one, you could want that a zero and that a one. And so the click position basically just uh, switches between them. Then you have the post click delays and the post line delays. Uh, the line delay is uh, basically uh, how long it takes between uh, writes. So as soon as it writes to this, so as soon as it, I mean, actually let's, so as soon as it finishes programming something and hits right by jumping, uh, the character jumping, 
Uh, it'll take a certain amount of time, especially with this uh, prom design, because of course we're using the repeaters. It takes a long amount of time, so you can't immediately start programming the next thing in, can you? You're actually going to have to say, program the contents of the shift registers first, then start the next program. Uh, you could fix this issue and make it a bit faster by adding a set of registers, just normal standard registers where it just tells it to update and then write the contents to, and then you can start writing on these. Uh, however, this design is just makes it a bit smaller and uh, easier to make because I'm going to be doing a tutorial on this. So yeah, uh, that's basically uh, the post line delay, just uh, how long it takes to write the contents of the register. So after that, then it'll start doing it again. Uh, then uh, you have the post click delays, uh, which is basically the uh, the time it takes between uh, clicks. So uh, because if you have a slow shift register like this one, uh, you might not want to go rapid fast like like this kind of thing, or else it'll break, as we can see here. Uh, so that's what the delay is basically, and you can set that for whatever shift register you want. So uh, that's basically this, and when you load a program, I'll show you the file in a minute. So uh, what this is, is actually a, a program compiler that I've just made in this uh, fairly easy to use uh, programming environment, you could say, called Scratch. Uh, I, this is where I first came into kind of like programmy stuff. Uh, I used this before I made Redstone and computers and stuff. Uh, it's uh, pretty simple and you can do quite simple things with it as it's just like kind of drag variables uh, let me zoom in on that uh, drag and drop kind of code basically uh, but you can also do a lot more complex stuff like uh, what I've done here like uh, let's just show you an example uh, like I've seen people like make simple 3d games in it and it's pretty amazing but over here I have uh, passing thing and this was pretty complex and this took me a good day to figure out so uh, yeah you can do pretty complex things on it so let's just show it off uh, it hasn't got all its features yet but we're just gonna show off uh, what it has at the moment so you basically have uh, these things up here and I've kind of written my own programming language for it but basically what this program does is uh, you can uh, write uh, programs into it, right? And then when you hit uh, compile, uh, which is this button, it will export it into machine code. And as you can see, it doesn't work properly because that's invalid code. So let's just delete that line. And as you can see, I have uh, several buttons. So choose computer, which isn't working for some strange reason. I need to implement that in. It's kind of broken at the moment. You have export, which is basically turn the text into machine code. Uh, for any computer, let, uh, may I add, you can actually use uh, your own custom computer for this. And I'll show you that in a minute, so you, like, you can uh, click customize length. Uh, you can customize the length of these command values. Uh, it's kind of broken still. Uh, yeah, there's, 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 there's obviously a few issues with it which I will definitely try and fix. Uh, but let's just, uh, we have add delete command, which is, we add or delete an actual command you want. So like four letter commands, and these are how, like the value of it. So if it's six bits, then you're gonna put six zeros in kind of thing. So uh, let's just, just, there we go. Uh, that's just a debug thing, which, actually uh, just displays errors as well as uh, actually debugging certain things so if there's something wrong with your program it can kind of fix it sometimes uh, choose computer will basically there'll be like preset computers and at the moment it's just using a random one that I made up uh, but there'll be preset computers that you can choose from and one of the computers of course will be this computer and you'll be able to be able to put the code from that right into here and it will work just like that hopefully uh, so let's just add line assisted for instance and these are our commands and these are our values so line the program is going to go on in binary so that's basically uh, these four bits here and it's basically which line the actual program is going to be 
put onto. And so uh, we're just going to say, uh, what is it in? It's six bits because this isn't for the right computer. But we're going to say, go on line one. Uh, I think that's the right amount of zeros. Uh, six, uh, we're going to say, go to line two. Uh, it does say like left to right how many decimal places and the command and if you don't want to input something you can just uh, just hit enter and it'll skip so uh, We're just going to enter some random stuff right into it and as you can see it comes out with this and you can add several lines This is just an easy way to do it and that's what the code looks like but then when we click export it will turn it into machine code for that computer and this will work with the computer you've made it for and then the really clever thing about this is once you have the machine code instead of having to copy and paste into a text document you can just click export and hopefully no uh, important files are showing on my screen at the moment but as you can see we can just hit save uh, let's just call it something else uh, and it saves us a text file. I don't know what that means, but we're gonna say, okay. Uh, well, it basically saves us a text file and it will uh, work with this over here. So it's pretty clever. So yeah, uh, that's that. And hopefully uh, I'll get it all working soon, sooner or later. And I'll do like a tutorial series on how to build it and how to use the programs as well as actually programming something in like the Fibonacci sequence. So yeah, uh, I guess, uh, hope you enjoy uh, what's coming up. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, I am out. See you later.